Good evening. Good evening, Beth Davis. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining. We're coming tonight. Special edition of our prayer live. Hey, James. Bless you, man. Thank you for joining. Getting ready to pray in agreement and in faith. A prayer of repentance. To stop this plague. In Jesus' name. Good evening, Nathan William Bowersock. Bless you. Thank you for sharing, Beth. So I don't know if you guys uh, saw my uh, video on the coronavirus uh, Saturday, the live on Saturday. I shared. Thank you for sharing, James. I shared uh, that which I have um, heard concerning the coronavirus, not with hindsight, but with foresight. Um, before the year, before the new year, the Lord began uh, dealing with me and speaking with me about the uh the coming year 2020 being a year of uh, solemn assemblies of prayer. From this book, When You Pray, Say, uh, the seven prayers of encounter to accelerate the prophetic promises over your life and region. And tonight I want to pray a prayer from this book. I want to pray uh, a prayer to stop the plague. I believe, I believe that this is one of the signs of the beginning of sorrow. I believe that this, uh, this plague is, is one of the signs of the beginning of sorrows. I, I know a lot of people believe it's a hoax. I know a lot of people believe it's uh, mechanically engineered. Uh, I know a lot of people believe it's been manufactured in a lab. And, uh, and so, you know, everybody has their um, reasons for believing that. And, uh, and it could be that. Uh, all I know is that the Lord spoke to my heart in January uh, with the January Solemn Assembly. And uh, he gave me... Uh, Isaiah 26 um, and that morning before I actually received Isaiah 26 uh, on the live that I was doing that morning it was January the 6th because I have it written down in my Bible I was reading in the book of Genesis and uh, and I have it written down in my Bible because I write in my Bible next to uh, those uh, verses that speak to me. And uh, I was reading in the book of Genesis and uh, and, and I had a, 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 a open vision and then I heard an audible voice and the audible, audible voice of God said, these are dying days. The audible voice of God said, these are dying days, and it it rocked me, and uh, and, and I I jolted like that, and uh, and then right where I was reading, when I had before I had the vision, I wrote it down next to uh, the verse, the chapter in Genesis thirteen that I was reading for the day, uh, January the sixth. 2020, these are dying days. And so then I, I came out of my prayer closet. Uh, that was about four or five in the morning. I came out of my prayer closet. And when I, I, I came on the live that morning at six in the morning, this is in January, January the 6th. 
I'm praying in the Holy Ghost like I do. You know how I do. Uh, if you follow me on the prayer lives in the morning from my book, When You Pray, Say, I pray in the Holy Ghost until I know what to say in English. And usually, if it's not a prophetic phrase, it's a prophetic uh, scripture. It's a verse that is rhema, made rhema or made personal because the Holy Ghost stirs it in me as I'm praying in tongues and it didn't come from my head. I, I usually don't even have it on my mind when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit will bring up a verse of scripture to pray in English to speak like Genesis 1, when uh, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. That's what happens when I pray in tongues. And, and you guys that uh, come on the lives, you know uh, how that happens. And so that morning after I heard these are dying days on January the 6th, 2020, the Lord gave me. Isaiah 26, 20, which said, come my people, enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide yourself for a while until the ignorant nation runs its course. For behold, the Lord is about to come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will reveal her bloodshed. And so I took that to, to be that uh, there was judgment going to be released in 2020, and the only, uh, you know, uh, out or the only escape for the judgment or from the judgment was uh, Isaiah 26, 20, Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut the door about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment till the indignation be overpassed. So I, I, I began telling the live this month is a solemn assembly the first seven days. It's time for us to come and seek the Lord from Joel 2.32. And so... These verses and the, uh, the vision and the audible voice that I heard, these are dying days on January the 6th, uh, were, were the context of the solemn assemblies of prayer that we host every first seven days of the month, every first week, every first seven day week of the month, this month. Uh, uh, it was first uh, March 1st through March 7th, and it was called Miracle Manifestation March. And the Lord uh, spoke prophetically concerning Miracle Manifestation March uh, in, in, in such a way that even uh, uh, now on March the 17th, the wisdom from this uh, prophecy uh, has been guiding my steps and, and, and ordering my conversation. And so, uh, but that prophecy was given this month and, and, uh, and every set first seven days, first seven day week of the month, we do these solemn assemblies based on the word of the Lord that God gave us uh, at the end of last year and at the beginning of January. And, and so uh, I believe that this coronavirus is that. And I told you that in a live uh, on Saturday. I believe that this coronavirus is the consequence of our iniquity. I believe this coronavirus is the a judgment for the iniquity in the earth. And I believe that the church must come together and pray to actually uh, uh, turn the table on that virus and, and stop the plague. Uh, when we repent, 
If, if my people that are called by my name, he said, would humble themselves and pray and, and, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven, I would forgive their sins and heal their land. And so tonight I want to pray a prayer of repentance. I want to pray a prayer of repentance in, 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 a, in a, uh, I, 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 an intercessory identification with the body of Christ uh, for, the, for, for, for the plague to be stopped in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, and I dare you to put in the comment section, stop the plague. <laughs> just, put in the, it, just, just put in the comment section, stop the plague. Uh, and, and so uh, I, I believe also that this plague is one of the signs of the uh, the the times, and and uh, and there are there are uh, signs that are listed both in Matthew twenty four and Luke uh, twenty one, and I want to I want to read it. The reason why I believe that this uh, plague is one of the signs of the times, the reason why I believe it's a judgment of God, is because of these verses and that, that word that I had at the beginning of the year before the coronavirus actually uh, was released, before that uh, plague actually began to spread. And, and so, uh, but Luke 21 I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray, but I want to set this up so that you can see what I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sensing and why I'm praying the way I'm praying. Luke 21 and Matthew 24. Luke 21 and Matthew 24. Uh, it says in Luke 21, verse 11, um, one of the signs of the times, it says, Then he continued by saying to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. And so plagues and, and, and fear is, are, are, one, are, are one of the signs of uh, the end. Plagues and fear are one of the signs of the end. Uh, I'm going to read it again for you. Uh, then he continued by saying to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes and in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. There will be terrors and great signs from heaven. So plagues and fear that grips the earth, they are one of the signs of the times. In Matthew, it says it again. Matthew, uh, in Matthew's version, it says it like this. It says, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars See to it that you are not frightened, for these things must, must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and in various places there will be famines, there will be earthquakes, but all these things are merely the beginning of sorrows. All these things are merely the beginning of sorrows. Now, I wrote a book about six years ago called The Beginning of Sorrows, and, and I believe that this is the season or this is the time that we are in. I believe we're in the beginning of sorrows. Not yet the end times, but the beginning of sorrows are the birth pains before the development of the end times. The, the actual end time verses are different than the signs of the beginning of sorrows. These signs, plagues and terrors and, and, and earthquakes and famines, 
These are the beginning of sorrows. It says the end is not yet. So these times are preparing for the end times. These times are preparing for the end of the age. And these times are called the beginning of sorrows. Now, anybody that knows, uh, uh, any woman that has had a baby knows uh, these sorrows or these birth pains. Uh, the, 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 the birth pains of a woman uh, when she's getting uh, closer to the time of the delivery of the baby, those birth pains, uh, they are contractions that get longer and stronger the closer she gets to dilation to push the baby out. And so in the uh, Matthew's uh, version of the end of the age signs and the beginning of sorrow signs, he uses that these are merely the beginning of birth pains or the beginning of contractions. Now, uh, uh, like I said, if you've had a baby, I haven't, but my wife has had it, ha had a baby five times, and uh, and I've seen those those contractions start as early as six. To seven months, uh, and they're and they're and they're they're stretching uh, and preparing for the baby to be birthed, and and, and that first one, uh, we thought we were having our first child, Shekinah, uh, uh, from seven months on to to the nine month uh, delivery. We. Th we thought we were having her because my wife, we had never had a baby before. She had never had a baby. And she would feel these, these, these contractions uh, uh, and they would be like, you know, real quick and, and painful. But then it would feel also uh, just a stretching. And she would say, well, it, I think it's time. I think it's time. And I was like, how is it time? No, it's only seven months. And, and uh, I, Twice we we got ready to go to the hospital, uh, uh, saying, thinking it was time. And then finally, when it was time, <laughs> I didn't believe her, even though we were uh, a, a week past due. And uh, and it was 2 in the morning. We had just come from watch night service in uh, 1998. It was 2 in the morning. I said, no, it is not time tonight. <laughs> we are going home. and uh, And we went on home. And uh, and uh, about three in the morning, she uh, she started uh, feeling the the pain and feeling like she had to push. And, and I said, well, you know, I said I better get up and take her. And what I what I noticed was uh, I heard her uh, sounding like uh, what would happen to me in prayer when I would go into intercession. And so. Uh, uh, we got up and went, and, and we had the baby uh, uh, at 7 in the morning. We got there like at 6-something. We had Shekinah at 7.20. But these contractions, uh, they get longer and stronger the closer you get to uh, the bay, the birth. And, and so what we've been in is the contraction. Uh, even over the last uh, decade, those contractions are, are getting longer and stronger. These are the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of birth pains. But the end is not yet. The end, it goes on to talk about uh, the actual uh, lawlessness and uh, it goes on to talk about the abomination of desolation spoken of through Daniel. It, it's talking about the, the Antichrist setting himself up in the temple. Uh, the end times are the seven years before the coming of the Lord. That's the end times. Uh, uh, the last days have been the last 2,000 years since the Pentecostal outpour. So the Pentecostal outpour uh, was the initiating of the last days. On, on, on the day of Pentecost, Peter described the outpour of the Holy Spirit as uh, the last days when he said... Uh, 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 
We're not drunk as you suppose. But this is that that the prophet Joel spoke of. That in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So from the day of Pentecost until the great tribulation. We have been in the last days. You know the verse that says a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. These last 2,000 years have been the last days. But the end times or the end time developments are the last seven years of the last days. The end times are the last seven years of the last days. And right before the last seven years of the last days are what is called the beginning of sorrows. And the signs of the beginning of sorrows are plagues, are terrors, are earthquakes in diverse places, are famines. These are the signs of the beginning of sorrows, but it says the end is not yet. So what does the beginning of sorrows indicate? What does the beginning of sorrows represent? Well, they represent uh, uh, various things in, in, in particular, but they are preparation times or preparation days for the end. They are preparation days for the end. The Bible talks about God initiated sorrow in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. The Bible tells us what God initiated sorrow is unto in the book of 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. I want to read it for you because if you if you understand what the beginning of sorrows are or the signs of the beginning of sorrows, it will help you overcome fear and prepare yourself for the end, for the last seven years of uh, the, uh, the, the dispensation or this age that we are in. And so in the book of 2 Corinthians 7, it says... I'm going to begin reading at uh, the 10th verse. It says, For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. I'm going to say that, I'm going to read that again because uh, you've got to understand what the beginning of sorrows represent. The signs of the beginning of sorrows are plagues, are earthquakes in diverse places, are famines, uh, 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 and, and uh, kingdom against kingdom, that's, that's ideology against ideology, nation against nation, that's race wars, that's race against race. Uh, uh, but but it says, but all these things are merely the beginning of sorrow, but the end is not yet. So 2 Corinthians tells us what God ordained sorrow is unto. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret leading to salvation, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And so these signs of the beginning of sorrow is actually supposed to initiate a repentance of his people to turn from their wicked ways and turn to him to receive salvation. It is the kindness of God. It is the goodness of God that leads us unto repentance. It is the kindness of God. It is the goodness of God that he would not give us over to the last seven years of these 
2,000 year period, this 2,000 year period without first preparing us and positioning us, number one, to repent, and number two, to know how to respond in the last seven years of the birthing of a new world. Now, uh, I tell you that, I share, with, share this with you, it's be, because we have to repent. We're shut in. <laughs> We're shut in with our families because we have to repent. All the entertainments, uh, the live entertainments uh, are shut down. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, soccer, movies, entertainment is shut down. Why? Because God is actually trying to get our attention. We have to repent, especially the body of Christ, especially the body of Christ. So Matthew 24 is... A, a, an actual snapshot and the beginning of sorrows are a snapshot of what's coming uh, what's coming at the in the last seven years when the bow judgments the seal judgments the trumpet judgments are released in the book of the revelation that's during the last seven years these days are the beginning of sorrows they are the birth pain times. They are the contraction. Somebody said, well, you know, nation has been against nation for I don't know how long, and, and, and kingdom has been against kingdom uh, for I don't know how long, and there's been famines, there's always been earthquakes in diverse places. Listen, the closer you get to the birth, those birth pains get longer and stronger. You know, we had H, uh, H1N1. We had the, uh, the, the, the Wuhan virus. Uh, uh, we've had the, uh, the Ebola virus. Uh, uh, now we have uh, the, uh, the coronavirus. And, and, and this one, uh, the impact of it, though, though the deaths are not as uh, the, the, at the toll that they were with H1N1 and, and, and Ebola, uh, the, the, the impact of it on society because of the closing down and the social distancing, closing down uh, all public uh, uh, events, the impact is felt stronger than the last uh, uh, virus that hit and then the last one from that and then the one before that. And, the, and while the deaths are not, uh, the death toll is not the same degree, it's because of the implementation of some of the uh, social distancing and some of the things implemented, but we're feeling the impact of it more than H1N1, more than the Ebola virus, even though those viruses killed more people, we are heading it off. In, in, in this one, and uh, my point is uh, that the contractions are getting longer and stronger as a woman about to have her child, as a woman that is about to have her baby. And so in this season called the beginning of sorrows, Put it in the comment section. These are the beginning of sorrows. In this season, it's a time of repentance. It's a time of revival. If, if, if we repent, many will be saved. 2 Corinthians 7. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret leading to salvation. If the body of Christ repents and stops the plague, it will lead to mass salvations. And so we've got to repent. And I said all of that to say I came on here to pray a prayer of repentance. I said all of that to say I came on here to pray a prayer of repentance. That, that, that his body, uh, the body of Christ, that we would repent 
from a, a, a bevy of things, a bevy of things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list them uh, in Jesus' name after I, after I, I'm going to read the prophecy that God gave us the first seven days of March. The God gave a prophecy that first morning, the morning live. I want to read that prophecy. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of repentance. And then I'm going to ask God to stop this plague. Uh, I, I, I'm going to ask God to stop this plague. And I want you guys to agree with me. Uh, uh, because I believe that there is authority and power in the prayer of, re uh, of, of agreement. And in the prayer of repentance. A and so uh, the prophecy that the Lord gave at the beginning of this uh, month, Miracle Manifestation March, our solemn assembly that first seven days, it says, for I brought you here to this month and I brought you here to this season to bring miracle manifestation, to bring expectation, and to bring information into your spirit about these days, say God. For you've been asking me. And you've been seeking me and you've been searching for me. And even in this month, you will find me, says God, for I will show myself to you and I will manifest myself to you and my glory shall be seen upon you, says God, for these are the days to arise. These are the days for my body to shine. These are the days for my lifting up, says God and the world will know and the cities will know and the nations will know that I am alive and the world will know and the cities will know and the nations will know that I am God and even in this season says God I will show my goodness to my people and I will bring great things and I will bring terrible things for there will be things that you will embrace and then there will be things that you must resist, says God. And I will cause you to know the difference. I will cause you to discern my spirit, says God, and you will not Follow the voice of any other. For you will follow my voice, says God. And you will be led by my spirit, says God. And my people will know me, says God. And my people will understand me, says God. And your eyes will see me. And your ears will hear me. And your heart will sense me, says God. For I will place in you a new heart. And I will give you a renewed mind and you will pursue me with all my heart says God and you will pursue with all my mind says God and even in this time no weapon formed against you will prosper because you are in me and I am in you no plague will come nigh your dwelling and I will even touch your home and will cover and will protect and will guard you, says God. And I will guide, says God, and you will arise in me and you will know that not one, no, not one has been good. But you will know my goodness and you will see it, says God, and you will know it. So know this, says God, manifestation shall be your portion this month. Know this, you will understand my miracles this month. And I will do it for I will hear you and I will answer you this month and I will do it. I will bring forth everything that I have declared and I will bring forth everything you have decreed. So no, I am in this month and this month is in me and I shall cause you to march around every obstacle and watch it fall. Every circumstance 
and situation is that is not of me. I will cause you to march around it in the month of March and watch it collapse, says God. For these are the days of marching in me. These are the days of wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, you shall receive, says God. And you shall know that I have given you the victory. And you shall know that I have given Given you authority and the plague shall be stopped says God the plague shall be stopped even in this month says God it shall be stopped and it will be no more so don't be afraid don't be fearful hide yourself in me come to me says God and I will cover you and I will protect you and I will guard you and I will guide you. Come to me, says God, and I will be all that I've called you to be in my name, in my son, in this month, says the living God. Now that was the prophecy that God gave us on March the 1st, 2020 in our seven day solemn assembly, March manifestation, uh, uh, miracle manifestation March. And, and this coming uh, April, our seven day solemn assembly is going to be free of no registration needed, uh, you know, uh, and it's going to be called Apostolic Acceleration April. Uh, Apostolic Acceleration April. And we're going to be studying the apostolic doctrines of Christ from Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, uh, that connect uh, us with our our priestly, high priestly ministry after the order of Melchizedek, that high priestly ministry of Hebrews 5 that calls heaven to earth, the, the priestly ministry of Melchizedek. We're going to study that over the first seven days of April. Now, listen, I want to pray the prayer of repentance because I believe that before we can stop the plague, we have to repent as the body of Christ. He says in the book of 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven, then would I forgive their sins and I will heal their lives. Land. And so before we can release healing in the land, the body of Christ, his people have to repent. What do we have to repent of? Whereas the nation has been stiff necked and rebellious, a rebellious people who have run after other gods, lusting after pleasures, money and fame. Uh, uh, and, and power and whereas sexual irresponsibility and perversion have polluted our nation and the blood of the innocents cries out to you whereas uh, we have embraced a culture of death where violence has permeated our entertainment our homes and our schools whereas our sins have destroyed lives and dishonored you and defiled our land whereas as many in the church have profaned the holy name of God by participating in and condoning the above sinful behavior and whereas it is written if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Most gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, almighty in power, awesome in grace and mercy, the only true and living God, we, your people, humble ourselves before you this day and 
and acknowledge that we have sinned greatly and deserve your righteous wrath. We beseech you, our Lord, to remember the blood of Yeshua that was shed for us and in your wrath to remember mercy. We implore you to pour out your spirit of conviction and repentance upon your slumbering, backslidden church so that all of God's people may truly humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. We shamefully acknowledge and humbly ask forgiveness for our complacency, compromise, apathy, loving the world more than God which has made us your enemies, our ignorance of the Holy Scriptures and the life of faith, ignoring and neglecting our call to prayer and fasting, living ungodly lies that have profaned the holy name of the Lord, abortion, divorce, pornography, and fornication are rampant in the church, clothing ourselves with affluence instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. The glorification of external beauty instead of the inner beauty of integrity and holiness. Being a part of the problem instead of the answer. Not being salt and light. Harboring unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, hatred, offense toward our brothers. Having no holy fear of God. Fear that is wisdom and the beginning of knowledge. Sleeping while the enemy has advanced his agenda across our land, through our schools, our entertainment, and false religion, allowing this nation to plummet into the present depths of moral depravity, our lack of compassion for the lost, failing to heed our commission, our lack of passion for the Lord, idolatry, loving ourselves and the world more than you. The anti-Semitic spirit which has pervaded the church and for the false belief that the church has replaced Israel in God's prophetic and redemptive plan. Condoning homosexual marriage and leadership in the church. Calling acceptance and normal what God calls an abomination. The sins of racism and segregation for embracing the wicked spirit of Freemasonry, which has brought deception and defilement upon the church, for embracing political rhetoric over the unchanging truth of the word and voting in leaders who are promoting ungodly legislation, supporting death and perversion instead of life and righteousness. Oh Lord, to us belongs shame of face because we have sinned against you. And so gracious God, we make our prayer before you that we might turn from our iniquities and walk in your truth. Oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, we pray let your anger be turned away from our nation. Righteous and merciful God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation for we are not present. Hallelujah. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies, O Lord. Hear, O Lord. Forgive, O Lord. Listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God. For why should the nation say, where is their God? Oh, Lord, may you hear our prayers and supplication and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, our God, we pray, let your eyes be open. Let your ears be attentive to the prayers made today in this place. And may our nation once again be a nation which is exalted by righteousness and whose God is the Lord. Now, God, we pray, Psalm 39, 39, 10, concerning this plague. Remove your plague from us because of the oppression of your hand we are perishing with reproofs you've chosen a man for iniquity you consume as moth what is precious to us surely every man is mere breath 
Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our cry. Do not be silent at our tears, for we are strangers with you. Sojourners like all of our fathers. Turn your gaze from us uh, that we may smile again uh, before we depart uh, and am no more. Oh, I declare now in the name of the Lord, remove your plague from us. In Columbus, Ohio, remove your plague from us. Uh, just put your state city on the comment section. Remove your plague from us. In the state of Ohio. Remove your plague from us. In Washington state. Remove your plague from us. In California. Remove your plague from us. In New York City. Remove your plague from us in North Carolina. Remove your plague from us in Florida. Remove your plague from us in Minnesota. Remove your plague from us in Wisconsin. Remove your plague from us in Illinois. Remove, remove, remove your plague from us. All over the United States of America, remove your plague from us. All over the United States of America, remove your plague from us. In Kansas City, Missouri, remove your plague from us. I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop, but I'm going to be coming on periodically all the remaining part of this week, and I'm going to be praying, I'm going to be speaking this prophecy and praying this prayer of repentance and praying for God to remove the plague, and in the the month of April, first uh, week in April, April 5 through 11, uh, we're going to host uh, our online solemn assembly for April, and we're calling it Apostolic Acceleration April. And we're believing God that he would accelerate the removal of the plague uh, uh, that has uh, been released in the earth. And, and, and I'll say this as I close, whether it's mechanical, uh, based on somebody manufacturing it in a laboratory, or whether it's uh, simply as a result of uh, a virus where uh, people were eating unclean meat. Hallelujah. Where, whatever it is, I, I declare it is the judgment of God. And I declare that when we repent, we will see a turning of the tide and we will see the removal of the plague. And so in the name of Jesus, I, I encourage you uh, to pray Psalm 39, 10 through 13. I also encourage you to uh, repent for the sins of uh, the body of Christ, your local congregation, your body, your family, just, just write down whatever sins God, the Holy Spirit, directs you to repent of. Repent and turn to him in this time, in this uh, designated uh, government shut down, shut in. And, uh, and let's turn it into a Holy Ghost shut in to stop this plague in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. But thank you for joining. Thank you for hanging in, those of you that hung in for the whole 45 minutes. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless you.